In this chapter, we will discuss three additional methods that we use to solve quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are equations that have the x squared. We have the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant term. And what we see on the screen here is what we call standard form. Everything on one side, zero on the other. The x squared term, this is called the quadratic term. The linear term is the term that has the x to the first power, and the constant term is the number without a variable attached. We have previously discussed the factoring method. In this section, we will talk about the square root method. And in the next video, you will talk about completing the square, and then the quadratic formula will be the next section. The square root method is a method that we can use to solve quadratic equations when there is no linear term. So as long as there is no linear term present, we only want the constant term and the quadratic term, then we can solve using the square root method. Now sometimes there is more than one method that you can use to solve a quadratic equation. When we see x squared equals 16, we see that we have a quadratic term and we have a constant term. We have no linear term. So we can solve this using the square root method, but in previous sections we have talked about solving this by factoring. So let's look at how we would solve this by factoring what our solutions are. In order to solve by factoring, we would need to subtract 16 from both sides. x squared minus 16 equals 0. We get our 0 on one, on one side. We will get our product, so we need to factor the difference of squares. And then we set each factor equal to 0. So we get two solutions. We get x equals positive 4 and x equals negative 4. So we get two solutions using the factoring method. What about the square root method? When we use the square root method, the first thing we want to do is make sure that whatever the square applies to is by itself on one side. We call this isolating the quadratic term. Once we have isolated the quadratic term, then we take the square root of both sides. That's why we call it the square root method. The reason why we're taking the square root of both sides is because we want to find out what x is equal to, not what x squared is equal to. We need to get rid of the square. When we take the square root of x squared, which is a perfect square, we have two of a kind. We can circle it, cross it out, and bring one of them outside of the radical. Now we have x equals, not x squared equals. We want to know what x is equal to, so we get x by itself on one side here. Now, square root of 16 is 4. What we see, there's a little bit of a problem here. We only get one solution with the square root method, whereas with the factoring method we got two solutions. We want to capture all possible solutions with the square root method, not just one of the solutions. In order to fix this, we include a plus or a minus in front of our solution. So something special happens on this side when we take the square, uh, square root of that perfect square. The square root goes square and square root cancel each other out. On the other side, we'll put our plus and minus so that we capture our two solutions. So when we have put the plus and minus there, that gives us a solution of plus 4, so x equals positive 4, and it also means that x is equal to negative 4. So our three steps for solving using the square root method will be to isolate the quadratic term. Whatever x squared, whatever the square applies to, we want to get that by itself on one side. Then we will take the square root of both sides. We want to make sure that we include our plus and minus symbol there to make sure that we capture both solutions. And then we will simplify any radicals and fractions that we have, and then we make sure that we always solve for the variable.